Okay, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do with this motor is in, install our crank bearings here. And um, there are, they are upper and lower specific. And usually they're labeled on the back. These Clevite bearings are. And so it says this one's an upper. but So that means towards the block side. But if you're not sure, they'll have an oil drilling in them like this one. Uh, like this bearing has a slot in it here. And that matches up with the uh, oil drilling in the crank. And also, um, they usually have these, they, well, they should have these little notches in the bearings, and those also line up with the notches in the block. So, and they simply just kind of just work them in just like so. You can just push them in with your fingers. I'm going to go ahead and get all these lower ones seated here and then we'll go on to uh, address the one piece rear main seal which is uh, pretty tricky for some people so here we go when doing this you want to make sure that your uh, your bearing surfaces are always clean before you try and set in your bearings that's absolutely imperative so you want to make sure that you uh, have those good and cleaned up and completely free of oil before you start this procedure. So, anyway, we'll keep moving along here. One thing I like to do before I um, finish my install of my crankshaft um, is to mock it up, so to, speak, so to speak, where I put the crank in and put all the main caps in and then um, I put plastic gauge on each of the crank journals and then I put the main caps down back over it and torque it down to uh, um, the required foot pounds which with uh, these Fords is 60 to 70 foot pounds but what I like to do is use this plastic gauge and it looks kind of like it comes in a big long thing kind of like this and you tear little pieces off and put them on the, uh, the crank journals and they show you how tight your clearances are with your bearing so we take a look here we are and you want to find the widest point so the wider it is the tighter your bearing so you can see there that we're at point zero zero one five um, so that's what we're getting for the squish so that's within spec you don't want to be where you're really smashed and flat and not even reading on the plastic gauge as well as you don't want to be way wide if you have something of that nature then you have problems and that's why I always have my cranks polished at least one under or turned um, ten under and then I get bearings for that I don't really like to uh, reuse my um, crank journals and rod journals the way they are. It's always a good idea to get those polished and that's a pretty cheap thing to do. So seeing as how we're in good spec and you have to do this you have to tighten down all the mains not just this one so and then break them all loose and then I'll take this crank out again and you don't want to lube it up when you do this because then your plastic gauge won't stay on your crank journal but anyway I'm gonna pull this crank out and lube up these journals and then we'll go ahead and get this crank installed as well as this rear main seal so here we go we'll go ahead and get the crank thrown up here and prepare to get it installed does it. So now move this around so we can get a good view. There we go. We're going to look at this getting this rear main seal installed. Now a lot of people have trouble with these and this is really the easiest time to install it. So you want the part with the spring obviously to face the inside of the motor. 
Now what I'm going to do is I got the uh, inside of this ring here all lubricated up and I'm going to go ahead and slide this on but what I'm first going to do is put a little gasket sealer around the uh, outside of this. Now I'm going to obviously clean my hands off so this is a dry surface um, and you want to make sure that your block here and your uh, your main cap is also nice and dry so that gasket sealer can really seal because oftentimes it'll actually leak around the gasket or actually on these sides so you want to put a little sealer on these sides and around the outside of this gasket and you want to make sure it's pushed up totally against um, the block and the main cap here and you might want to go around with a piece of wood and tap it but generally you, at this stage you can get this uh, get this seal in by hand so so we got a very light coat of sealer on there and we're just gonna slide this baby on here push it down until it's seated take a little bit more gasket sealer A little bit more of our sealer here. And get it in the sides. You need a very light coat, so obviously on this side I got way too much, but that's not going to be too big of an issue there as we wipe it out. You don't want to get it on your other mating surfaces. Anyway, we got that seated, and then we're going to run down our rear main cap here. So, don't want to really make any mistakes where you got to pull it back out because you got sealer on it. So, this is the best way, as you can see, it'll compress this ring down here so as you go you want to make sure that it's not getting squished out of place so I'm going to get these nice and snug here okay we're good and snug and you can see we just got a very small amount squishing out the sides which is totally fine okay looks like our rear main seal is completely even all the way around. So just to verify here, we might put a little bit of force off of it. Visually, it looks like it's seated all the way around and from the feel, it feels like it's good and seated. So, I don't like to tap on it because unless you have something where you can tap on the whole thing at once, um, you can kind of really mess it up. And that's why a lot of people get leaks because you have to be able to tap on those all around at once. So you need a big, like, cup that could go over that. So. That's generally what a Ford dealer would have if they went to do it with the uh, um, main cap still installed. So we're going to go ahead here and go on a three-step torque process. So we need to go to 70 or 65. So I'm going to start out at 40 on both of these babies here and you want to make sure you dog your engine stand when you're trying to torque but I'm just gonna have to deal with not having it dogged here 
So now we're going to go to 60. Okay. Yeah, we get it dogged up there. There we go. Difficult to get proper camera angling. With my garage here. So now we're at 60. And I'm going to check the spec one more time. Because I do believe it's 60 to 70. Indeed it is. So we're going to take them to 65. Okay, so we need to go to 70 foot pounds. So I'm going to hold it here. We got kind of a old school um, pork wrench, so we're going to get the back dogged over there and then bring it on to, to 70 foot-pounds. There we go, 70. And 70. So, with that being done, this uh, one piece rear main seal should be seated up perfect. So, anyway, that's kind of how the rear main seal is done. Now we're going to go ahead and work through the rest of the bearings. You want to be sure to uh, dig your um, gasket sealer out of this area here where the pan gasket goes because that can cause problems. So, you can just kind of get in there with a screwdriver. And get the most of it. It doesn't cause too many problems, but you can really get the vast majority of it out without too much of a headache. So there we go. We're all cleaned up and we're not going to obstruct our pan gasket now. When installing all your main caps here, you want to make sure that you have your threads good and oiled up so you get an accurate torque reading um, and you want to make sure there's a little bit of oil up here on the head too so usually when you put it in it'll squish some of it onto the uh, top of the main cap for that head but you do this so you get an accurate torque rating and you don't uh, get improper readings due to uh, friction so you want to go through and do this to all of the main cap bolts and what I use when I do this is uh, some of the Lucas oil stabilizer now I don't know how good it works for a uh, um, a running application but it's definitely it's definitely good assembly lube so so I'm doing the mains here you want to tighten in a three-step process to uh, 70 foot-pounds. I can steady my arms here. I definitely don't recommend using this type of torque wrench. It makes it pretty difficult. It's what they did in the old school days. So, there we have it. And you want to go through and recheck all your mains. Anyway, so you tighten your mains down the three step process. And when you're done, they should all be torqued to about 70 foot pounds. The specs are 60 to 70, but um, after these bolts have been reused, I like to go to the tighter spec. So once this is all done, your crank should be able to freely move. It shouldn't be difficult to move whatsoever. You should be able to turn it with one hand. So if you can't, then uh, going back to why I use the plastic gauge, obviously you're way too tight or there's something binding up or something wrong. So anyway, once the crankshaft is uh, set up here, we're going to go ahead and check the crank end play and then 
we should be good to uh, install our pistons. Okay, so the next thing after we install the crank um, is you want to check the crank in play. And if you had this where it wasn't set right, you'd have to take this all apart and uh, sand this down a bit, the sides of these bearings. But um, uh, I already checked mine before I went ahead and did this. So that's why I have already installed my rear main seal. But basically, how you do this is you give the crank a few taps on the harmonic balancer side here. And then you want to take your feeler gauge and the Ford called for spec is between 0 .004 and 0 .008. So I can get the four in, but I cannot get the eight in. So if I couldn't get the four in, I'd have to pull this off and sand it down. But seeing as how I could, um, it'll be just fine. And I can't get the eight in. So it's right within spec. So, so far, we're in good shape. So in reference to our feeler gauge here, we fell um, slightly smaller than the .0015 inch spec. And um, what is specified in this uh, shop manual from Ford is that the main bearings need to fall within .001 and .0015. So we were a little bit less than point. 0015 on the plastic gauge so we're within spec there as well so our bearings are within spec and our shaft in play is within spec so we're ready to move on to installing the pistons